everyone, thank you for joining tonight's post-game press conference following a one nothing loss to Chicago. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone uh, to please turn your cameras on when you're speaking with Coach uh, on Zoom. Uh, we'll begin with an opening statement with Coach Carnell, followed by questions. So again, Coach, you've got the floor. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Thanks, Joel. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, listen, we, we go twice down um, to Chicago in a week. Uh, obviously, mixed bag of emotions, mi mixed bag of feelings, because uh, just to see the, the city of red, <laughs> the city red flying around in the stadium was, was great to see. And uh, first of all, thank you to all those fans who traveled out. You know, um, it, it looked like thousands, not just hundreds. So thank you for that. Um, and we set about, you know, ambitious ob objectives uh, for this game. And uh, yeah, we have a bit of a shaky start, but then I think we get control of the game and, and drive the game and, and dominate that first half and get derailed by, by a set piece situation, which yeah, I mean, it, it sucks to go down on a set piece situation. And then, yeah, we have a good start to the first, a second half. We end the half well. We, we start the second half really well. Um, Jabulo Blom comes in, you know, just solidifies the midfield there. Um, and, then, and then we get caught in a moment of desperation with Johnny getting the red card. So now we have to improvise a little bit. Um, and then again, to see the way we push the game with a man down, uh, gives me a lot of hope as a coach because it shows this means something to these guys and it means a lot um, and we emptied the tank and, and just to see guys who couldn't run anymore and they were trying their, their utter best right so to see what it means to them um, makes me proud to be their coach because I felt we really pushed the game at the end and unfortunately yeah we just couldn't get the ball you know in, in, in many dangerous moments uh, while we were trying to push that game um, but for the most part, yeah, again, you know, I thought we took a step forward today despite the result. Thanks, Coach. We'll open the floor to questions. Uh, we'll start with Tom Timmerman. Brad, how critical is the offensive situation right now, the goals that you're having trouble getting? Yeah, you know, Tom, I think it looks different. I think if you, if you acknowledge the fact that, you know, before the end of the first half, Celio goes on a, on a breakaway, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We earn a little chance and we stay in the chaos. And, and he's blank before the goal, right? So if that's a one day slots home, you know, and we're not blaming anyone, right? We're all in here as a team, but these are moments that define games and these are moments whether it's back or at the back of the field, at the front of the field, that define moments. You get the momentum back again, the score goes in, uh, the goal goes in, then it's one, one and a half, right? So there's different moments that, that dictate the tempo and, and the, the dynamic and the outcome of the game, obviously. So, you know, um, we're just not finding ourselves in enough of these moments, right? So we're trying to stay in the chaos. We're trying to keep it going. And you can see for a lot of the game, I thought the pressing was really good. I thought, uh, you know, we forced a lot of turnovers. I thought they, they made a lot of mistakes in terms of their build-up play. Um, you know, so yes, we're looking to capitalize more. We're looking to play quicker through the lines. We're looking to transition quicker. Um, something that was a little bit more free-flowing, if you're talking about early on. Um, so yeah, can we get to those moments to not control a counter-attack? Can we get to end off a counter-attack really quickly, Tom? So yeah, for sure it's not optimized, <laughs> I would call it, or efficient. And that's where we have been recent, um, you know, prior to that. And then Nelson's foul, just for a guy who's already got a yellow card, that's probably not the, not the play to make. Yeah, listen, I, I stand by my players who defend forwards and are brave, right? So you can't stop in that heat of that fraction of a second to say, hey, Johnny, don't go and play our way and, and apply the principles. Yes, you have to apply a little bit of the situation. He just arrives a little bit late. So, you know, but I fully stand behind my player who, who tries for the best reasons possible to try and win the ball and win the game for his team. So no blame on, on anyone. Next we'll go to Santiago. Bradley, good afternoon. Wanted hey, to ask you hey, about Jab wanted to ask you about Jabulo Blom. He came second half and then after Johnny had got that second that second yellow card and the red card, he had to go and play defense. Um, can you speak about what Jabulo did today, what you saw from him? Yeah, listen, he broke up some plays. Um, he's he's good on the ball and he's brave and he's tenacious in a tackle. So you know, we need to get Jabulo minutes, and uh, we knew we could progress him at least 45 today. So, you know, we had a game today where Miggy Perez was, was on a yellow card, had one or two, you know, danger moments at the end of the first half there. So for that point of view, um, I think it was only the right thing. Uh, I thought Miggy had a great game in the first half again, and uh, Jabulo just continued in the same fashion. So, you know, it shows at the heart of midfield, 
uh, for games coming forward. You know, there's potential now for, for you know, solid minutes for Jabulo to progress and uh, the aim is to get him turning out 90s, you know, in the next couple of weeks. So, um, at least we look optimistically with regards to that. Next we'll go to Ben Hockman. Hey coach, uh, kind of following up on what Tom Timmerman was asking about in regards to offensive production. Um, in regards to, notably the second half, just stringing passes together, um, I, I assume you, you would want it more fluid. Uh, can you describe the, the passing of your team today, notably the second half? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of the second half we play, you know, a man down and we start chasing a little bit. But uh, yeah, I just said it in the earlier question, um, to be a little bit more progressive in the transitions and, and find forward passes and being a little bit more dynamic and, and taking a little bit less time uh, to get to the opponent's goal. So yes, Benjamin, we want to play a little bit more vertical. We want to play a little bit more brave. So yeah, this is just a, a sequence, a pattern. And uh, yeah, I err on the side of aggression. Right, I I personally err on the side of you know trying to thread those balls forward, and uh, yeah, we have to support our players and, and trying to make sure that we we get over this hump. And uh, sometimes when it's not going your way, it's understandably so to fall into a little bit of a passive mentality, and we keep trying to push this and drive the the, the positivity, trying to drive the the mentality of playing vertical. Um, because this is the way that we thrive in and, and it's the way for us to be efficient. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, um, yeah, on, on a knife's edge now. You know, you play forward, you lose the ball, but then we feel we have parameters in place and, and tools in place to counter press and go forwards, of which we've been talking about each other this week, to, to take steps forward. And, uh, you know, in terms of steps forward, um, I, I look at this game with, you know, a bit of, bitter about the result and, and sorry to, to the fans about the result and sorry to the boys who emptied the tank. But in terms of a performance, I saw a real good um, display here today. Ben, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I can make it quick. Just, I mean, every coach wants to win every game, obviously. Uh, but as you head into this next game, is with, with players possibly coming back, you, you haven't won in a, in a bit now. It's a rivalry game. Can you kind of describe the hunger, if you will, of like just getting a win? Yeah, I mean, winning winning is the byproduct of doing something during a game, doing during training sessions, right? So that's those are all byproducts, and and it's easy just to say win, right? Because yeah, they they win on a on a set piece, right? So um, I think it's there's a, the game is a lot more complex than just you know you put out eleven players and you it, you you show up and you win a game. I think there's a lot of uh, depth involved into winning a game. There's a lot of uh, layers involved into winning a game and what it takes to win a game. So, you know, I don't think things we've spoken about and, and the way we play and the principles we play by, um, you know, we, we're not talking about, you know, yes, it's a rival match, but yeah, for us to to get a result, we need to be at the top of our game. Uh, we've proven that, you know, we're not uh, we're not Real Madrid who just roll out a lineup and expect to win 3-0 every game. We have to be at the top of our game every game. Um, I know a couple of players said it before, but this every game we play, it's like a cup game for us. We want to win the game. We, we want to, we, you know, we want to play with an edge, and uh, we felt that we lacked that edge over the last couple of games. And and I finally thought against Dallas, um, and in moments on the on the cup game, but definitely today that we played with that edge, right? So um, yeah, we feel that yeah that we're trending in the right way. Now we just have to make sure. Yes, we we know we're getting Klaus back at some stage. We know we're getting Rasmus back at some stage, and. You know, potentially games will you know have different outcomes, and uh, but we have to believe in the squad that we have, and, and we have to show belief in, in our strikers, in the players, and you know I don't believe that just our strikers are responsible for the games. I don't believe that. I think you know we can progressively move up the field and and shorten the distance for our outside backs who we support in our style of play as as uh, playmakers almost as well. So you know we got to get them higher up the field. We got to get them crossing a bit braver. We've got to get them, you know, uh, a little bit more efficient in the final third, and then you start earning a little bit more of the dynamics. So, yeah, I mean, we look at uh, look at this game taking taking a step forward. We'll go to Julian Trejo. Coach, um, how do you explain and how frustrating was it to concede a goal off a set piece from a man just being open in the back post? Yeah, listen, I think there's two dangers when Shakir is on the ball, right? The one danger is he puts it in the top corner. The other danger is he picks out a teammate, right? Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if, if we're expecting him to have a shot on goal. I have to look at the video again, but yeah, um, Chichos, uh, you know, he's, he's on the back post there. 
uh, way too easy. So, which means, are we doing enough in our defensive responsibilities? Are we blocking guys? Are we bumping guys? Are we, you know, trying to impede their runs a little bit? So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a harmless goal that we we give up, but. Uh, yeah, again, uh, we'll have to look at that, and, and these are reflections to, to get better by, because, yeah, uh, that's what the cycle of a season is, right? So you try and repair what's going on over the last couple of weeks, um, and uh, we score a goal on Tuesday, we concede one today. So, you know, when we, we try to, you know, play with an edge, get the fire back, and we start, you know, trying to work our way or will our way back into, into good performances, and... I thought today, you know, we showed parts of that uh, for many moments of the game. So, um, and and now we, you know, you know, concede a set piece, and now you have to start looking at that. So that's what the cycle of a game is, and, and that's the beauty of, of you know being being a pro coach or being a pro soccer player. Um, it, it's never easy, right? It's when the when it's going well, it's awesome. Things are on autopilot. When it's not, now you you know trying to poke holes in every. Uh, in every little aspect of the game just to make sure that we can try and define and, and, and dictate outcomes. So yeah, it's a constant work in progress. Next we'll go to John Lupo. Randy, you mentioned that you were satisfied with how the press was working today. What aspects of it were you pleased about the most? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought just a willingness to take away and restrict space, you know, um, Joe Akini keeping it to one side and then on the jump and, you know, forcing it underneath. And the one thing we could do a little bit better with was the second balls, obviously, um, because when we start now turning over some high balls, uh, they instinctively then start to play long. So, um, you know, so it's just this back and forth, uh, how we deal with us, how we position ourselves, how disciplined are we in the positions. Um, you know, I thought Bartlett and, and uh, uh, Kyle Hebert, um, you know, did a good job on Kamara uh, for most of the time. Shakir is a quality player if he has time and space. And yeah, listen, through the nature of his game, he always seems to find up and, you know, pop up in little pockets of space. So um, he's always difficult to, to you know, uh, take care of. But um, I thought for moments, uh, and especially when we started driving the game in the second half, uh, we had we had a lot of positive turnovers and and good transitions. So you know many many moments there. But uh, we spoke about the efficiency of the transitions, which we you know we're looking forward to a little bit more verticality. Next we go to Matt Baker. Coach, one of the battles that you lost in the game from a stats perspective looks to be the the duels, the aerial duels especially. And you've talked you've talked a lot of in the past of the importance of winning those battles. So how do you feel like your team can? Uh, start winning those battles going forward? Yeah, it's a good question, Matt. And if you look at duels, you know, I think, you know, other teams apply their duels differently. You know, they go into a 1v1, right? So if we try and get ball orientation, we every time we a ball is passed, we want a duel, right? So the frequency of our duels are a lot higher, which means we might lose that duel percentage, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, Every square pass, every back pass, every ball into feet, you know, for the strikers, it's going to be a duel for us. It's going to be on the duel count, you know. So, um, and, and I don't say we're going to win all our duels, but sometimes there's an intent um, of the way we win the duel that kills momentum of the opponent. And that's what I love, and that's what I thrive in. So, you know, that's what the team loves and energizes off of, um, that we just apply more duels than the opponent. I think it stands t to say that we, we will be pretty low in the dual count, you know. So yeah, we want to improve every single day in terms of our successes and when, when the duels are there to be won, uh, we don't want to let guys in too easily. And, and the start of the game, you know, I thought there was still two versus one, three versus one, three versus two. We had enough overloads and we didn't win those battles, right? So, which gives the opponent momentum. So if we can do a little bit of a better job cleaning that up um, and the way we start the game, uh, then I could see a real positive outcome from this group going forward. We've got time for one more with Coach before we move on to Roman Berkey. So, Justin, you got the last one. Coach King Glover is the first player from this kind of age group to make an MLS appearance. It's a short appearance for him, but how do you feel like he handled himself out there? Yeah, good. I mean, you know, I just as he ran in, I just said, just chase every ball down and, and try and make a bit of havoc in the box, you know. So, um, yeah, we just wanted to get some fresh legs there. We, we had to, you know, be a little bit... Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit structured in terms of our, you know, against the ball principles, a man down. So, you know, we went to a three at the back with a four midfield line with Jared Stroud running the run side, running the one side, and, and Isak Jensen running the other side, you know, just doing double duty on the sides. 
um, and then to instill two strikers because Joaquini did a lot of work today and he emptied he emptied the tank for his team. So you know, just to try and add another um, threat, whether aerially or in the box or when we're chasing the game. So yeah, I mean, yeah, these experiences for him are, are you know valuable, and uh, he'll he'll take one step forward too when. You know, when he comes back around with us, or, or plays down at City too, or in his own relevant age group. I mean, these are these are magical moments for our club. So, talk about successes and failure. Yes, the result didn't go our way today, but you know, there's a couple of successes uh, in terms of guys' performances and and what it meant to them, and you know, the opportunities we're giving to to our to our club. Right? We believe in we we believe in homegrowns. We believe in the development of our um, academy. Um, so we see this as a big success moving forward. Coach, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, John. Uh, Roman, it seemed like despite the result, you guys played much better in this match against Chicago than the, than the tough match in the midweek. Do you feel like that this is a performance you can build on as you get ready to go home and face Kansas City and Vancouver? Oh, no, I'm far away from being uh, happy about the performance. Uh, I mean, we had almost no like real chance to score a goal. Uh, they had a lot. We started the game uh, like the like the game last Tuesday, uh, just not just not ready. Uh, they had uh, two good chances uh, in the mid in the, in the cup game. They scored uh, in the first minute. Uh, it's it's it, it it was not a not not a perfect and also not a. A really bad performance, but it's just not uh, good enough and not our standard. Next, we go to Ben Hockman. Uh, Roman, I, I'm not asking about the strikers that played tonight, but can you just describe the importance of Klaus and how he can change a game? And assuming, hopefully, for you guys, he'll be back next game. Yeah, I mean, uh, the numbers they speak for itself. I would say, um, uh, I hope that. I had hoped that um, Nico could uh, easily um, yeah, take his spot and uh, yeah, play, play the same role, but um, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not working. Uh, for Nico, he's not uh, scoring. Uh, he, I think he feels better in, uh, when Klaus is back, when he can drop down a little bit more. Uh, because like this, most of the time he was, he was not there where, where we needed him. When we crossed the ball or we won the ball, we had nobody like going deep into uh, into, into their box. Julian? Roman, it's been a difficult three games for you guys right now. And you guys obviously have such high standards for yourselves. What do you guys do in moments like these to stay positive and try and win the next game? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a game. Uh, we are uh, aware of what we can do better or or not. Um, of course, we talk with each other. We are um, we are open and uh, straightforward. So we are not like trying to 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 talk something good that isn't. So we had a meeting uh, right 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 now after the the game and um, yeah we 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 had a chat about the game and now we have two days off and. Um, I think after that um, we will analyze the game again, video meetings, and um, try to get better uh, every day. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Go ahead, Tom. Roman, is this a kind of critical juncture of the season with how things are going right now? Like one, five, and one in the last stretch of games here. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I haven't really thought about the uh, record at the moment. Uh, mm. just We lost the game uh, against Portland, um, then it was this weird game against uh, Dallas, uh, where we started really good, we had a really good start and um, then we lost against Chicago in the, in the, in the, in the cup and now again uh, it's just it's frust frustrating and um, it just, I have the feeling that something is missing, I don't know what I, I maybe it's Klaus. <laughs> I don't know, but something is, is missing in the team. Uh, we, I think we have not the same energy we had um, like before in games like Cincinnati or the first home games, the games in in, in Austin, our first MLS game. It's just something is missing. Yeah, I feel. Matt Baker, go ahead. 
Roman, I'm curious how you thought your backline performed, and what did you see on, on that set piece of bowl? Um, it was decent, to be honest. Um, of course, uh, they were sleeping as well, like the, the whole team in the first uh, minutes, and they were not ready. And the set piece goal is just, I can I just can describe it out of my position or, or my view. Uh, I thought, to be honest, Shakir is going to shoot. Uh, it's a perfect position for him, and I know him, he has a really good shot. So I was surprised too for the, that he crossed the ball. But I mean, uh, at the end, it's the it's the, the line who has to be aware of that. It's it, it cannot happen that uh, a guy who is strong in the air like Chico's is is all alone by himself and has easy has just has to has to has a, has a tap in. We'll go back to Julian. Berkey, following these two this um, against Chicago and then a rivalry game against Sporting next week. And how do you expect this next week of training to be? I mean, the training week was not bad. Uh, the last training week, we had uh, a good energy. We had good discussions after the after the loss against Chicago in the Cup. And uh, um, but it's it feels good to have a whole week now to prepare for a game and not uh, just a few days. What's this week been like, considering the last two of the last three weeks where you've had minimal practice time as a group with the with the cup games? I think for me it, it was it was okay. I mean, I'm I'm almost used to that my whole career. I had a lot of I had a lot of games, so um, I like it. Um, I think it's something you need to get used to it if you are not uh, if if it's like something new for you because, uh, like I said. Or like you said, we have almost no training. You just do a little bit of tactical stuff, no intensity really. Most of the time you are uh, um, traveling or, or um, doing a, a regen session. So I mean, I like it. I really like it. But um, how the results are at the moment, uh, I'm happy that we have one week now, one full week to uh, prepare for uh, for Kansas. Roman, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Safe travels home. Thank you, guys.